In part one, I showed you what the broom can do for impact and through swing. Part two, I'm going to fix your backswing. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Another day, another dollar. Back with the broom. Big thanks to everyone that has joined the channel on the back of this little bad boy. Hopefully by now, you're starting to see some relationships within the golf swing. Hopefully I'm starting to dispel a lot of mistruths and misconceptions of how this golf swing works. Today I wanted to talk about the backswing. I've done a few videos on the backswing, but I wanted to follow on from the broom video that I made uh, earlier in the week or back end of last week, should I say. So do check it out if you haven't seen that because that's uh, a really important one for you to watch. Today, as I say, we're talking backswing. Backswings are problem childs for many reasons. They are fueled with anxiety. There's been many a golf pro, Sergio Garcia, Robert Carlson, most notably even Justin Rose, that got into a situation where they couldn't take the club away. Stuttery, re-gripping. A lot of that comes from the fact that they're worried about the shot, where it's going to go. You fill your mind with enough garbage and that will start to happen. And you start to see some really quirky takeaways and you start to see some really quirky moves, uh, which, as I say, all manifest themselves from overthinking, which invariably is poor thinking, poor application, which delivers bad shots. What I'm going to show you today with this broom for a backswing will hopefully alleviate a lot of that anxiety. When we make the golf club much heavier, you have to move a little bit more in time with the lever. This is one lever, the other lever is the, the two arms because they're effectively one lever. When you then make the lever heavier, if your body is out of sequence, moving too quickly, it's all of a sudden the ramifications of that becomes far more pronounced down at strike because the weight is heavier. So as soon as I start to move really quickly with my body, trying to turn out the way, and we hear it all the time, don't we? He, all he has to do is just turn out the way. Well, if I just turn out the way, can you see how that golf club is really out of sequence with me? When we make the golf club heavier, we then appreciate that when we transition, we must pull on the golf club. If we don't, pull on the golf club when it's heavy, it will dictate to us rather than us dictating to it. That's the implications or that's the benefits of making something much heavier when we swing. Then when we lengthen the lever arm, the, the broom in this case, and someone asked me the other day, how long is the broom? I'm six foot two, sitting about chest high, so it's about four feet in, in length. We are, when we got the lever longer, it then makes that weight even more amplified. The other really useful part of this broom is that it really gives us a really great insight into where the face is pointing. When I point the broom head at the ball to target line at your intended target, again, it gives you a really huge influence on how much this handle will make to the direction of the club face. So anyone that is making the club head overtake through strike, you can see you're trying to point the face to the left. Anyone trying to drive the handle forwards, you're trying to point the face to the right. The handle up and the handle down, well, it doesn't really change the loft angle of the broom. <laughs> so we'll have to look a little bit past that, but that is an influence as well. As I say, backswing today. Now, back in the day, Faldo, who I've been a little critical of, of the teaching through Faldo with various elements of that whole Leadbetter uh, philosophy, shall we say. One of the things that really stood out for Nick in his game was the fact that he really used to hover the golf club and, that, and never really made any, I mean, and I was an absolute Faldo perv, by the way. I mean, idol, uh, idolised him, 
I was all about Faldo uh, and his teaching. I got all of the video series, and that was really kind of where I, I, you know, almost started the seed of, of instruction for me because I really enjoyed building, and I still do enjoy building stuff. When the club was hovering off the floor, he never really talked too much about that. I think there was far more to be gained from that than people appreciate. When the club head is on the floor, you can see, as I've referenced many times, the handle is super light. As soon as I make that broom head off the floor, now that broom head is off the floor, I can move it. But what you can't see is that it's actually been lifted off the floor. It's like taking the strain in a deadlift. You take the strain, you don't lift it off the floor, but you just take the load. I'm taking the load of the club head. Now at that point, my shoulders are now loaded. Because I've now got my shoulders loaded, they're starting to feel like they become part of the golf swing before the club's even moved. Now I've got the pressure working in my handle, which I've talked about many times, the force down and the force up, the force down with the left hand, the force up with the right hand. And as I now start to have that pressure and I start to move the golf club away, and I simply feel how my right hip is gonna turn back and my right shoulder is gonna turn back, which incidentally people actively don't do. They want to stop that because they believe that the right hip and the right shoulder coming back inside is the catalyst for making the head swing inside. And you can see that that is not the case. I can move my shoulder back inside, and yes, I can make the head swing inside as well. But look where the handle's gone. The handle's gone over there, isn't it? This handle hasn't come back inside my left shoulder. Now, when I move the left hand inside, I could actually keep the club head out. So by taking the strain and keeping the pressure down and making that right hip and that handle move inside, you can now See how the, the, the broom head has now mirrored the arc that I'm trying to make with my body. So as I then start to move the handle back in and we start to try to get the head up, the head up starts to change the way the forearms will work. So as I move the handle underneath and I start to feel the head lift, as it starts to lift, because it's got so much weight on the end and the mass of the head is swinging around and over the top of the handle, is swinging over and around the top of the handle rather than underneath the handle. When the head swings underneath the handle, the golfer immediately feels like they've got no angle of attack because at the point where the head swings in, the shaft obviously wouldn't point up to the sky, but it would certainly be very shallow. The shaft would be shallow. The arms would be steep because the arm has moved away. And this is one of the things that a lot of golfers try to do. They push the handle away in an effort to keep the club head out. And you then end up with a face in the broom pointing way out in front of you. So by taking the strain and feeling the shoulder exert force down on the handle, the hip open up, which pulls the chest around, you start to allow that club handle to work in. And now look at the face. Club head's not in, but the face is still pointing down to the ball line, because you can see with the broom, as soon as I move the handle out, you can see how the face and the loft looks up. Now as we start to go up to the top, the weight of the broom head starts to pull itself down. Now at this point, I want to really reference where the face is pointing. So when I made that move, can you see how the face, which is this end of the broom, pointing to the target, See how the broom, the nose of the broom is now pointing up. That, for most golfers, will feel like the face is open. The more I point the toe and the face of the club 
to the ball line, that feels secure. That feels like your ball is going to be struck down the ball line. Unfortunately, when a golfer starts to point the shaft up to the sky in an effort to point the club face down the ball line, as the golfer starts to pull it to the ball, the energy of the handles going out to the ball, whether you like it or not, you may think you're trying to move the handle down, but the handle is absolutely moving to the ball. The loft and the face angle is pointing up to the sky. It was pointing at the ball line because that's what you felt like you needed to do with your right arm. This is why we get these flying right elbows. You're trying to point the face to the, to the ball line. Then as you pull the handle down, look how the head reacts, it falls back. It would fall back if it was heavy enough, but if you've got a light golf club and you've been fitted for light golf clubs because your technique is a little miscued, it gives you more opportunity to pull the face pointing at the golf ball in transition. But ultimately, when you come to swing, the head will always try to then fall back underneath the handle. So we end up with a golf swing that looks something like this, which then, through strike, looks something like this. So we go shallow with the head because we've got no energy in the handle. We then lift the swing up, so we then get a little bit crossed over. And then as we pull it down, the shaft gets a little bit steep. You would then hit a flat pull, or with the longer clubs, You'd open the face up and you'd start blasting them out to the right. You then get the instruction, blasting it out to the right, you need to swing more down. Swinging more down gives you more time, but it doesn't remedy the fact that your club is swinging brutally out to the right with your handle. Then you start to get some shanks going and then you're in disarray. And I've had quite a few people coming to me just recently that are in real disarray because they're steep with their arm pitch, they're across the line, they're inside, they're shanking it, they're drop kicking it, it's just nastiness. And of course, I then say to them, I now need to make you feel more outside in than you've ever felt before. And it's like, but that is completely the opposite, that everything on YouTube says, everything a golf coach has ever said, but that's because the lion's share of the instruction is not understanding the levers, the forces we need to apply through the feet, how the pelvis works, and how we apply force and pressure on the handle to make the face line up. And this broom does a lot of that work for us. So then when we start to make this golf club move back, as I keep the pressure down on the handle, because I'm keeping the pressure down on the handle, which is sucking me in posture, as I elevate my arm pitch up, we can see how that shaft starts to pull over. Now as I start pulling the golf club, then I'm back into the pressure down through strike. And we start to see how this broom really gives us the opportunity to line everything back up at the bottom of the ball. So there's the shaft pitch. It's the shaft pitch is laid down because the head weight has fallen over me. Now I can use the pressure and force in the handle to line the broom back up. But look where the handle is at that point on the way down. Look at the pressure that I'm exerting on the force of the handle to line the face back up. So this broom really offers up some great energy through the shoulders, starts to mobilize your middle, gets you feeling how the shaft pitch will start to change in its backswing and downswing and then start to line it all up at the bottom. Now, of course, when we've got a pitching wedge, and it's more like this at address, and of course it's not quite like this, the shaft pitch up here would start to look a little bit more like the golfer that is a bit steep and a bit crossed over. Then when we've got our driver with the shaft pitch more like this, now this is a bit of a problem child, which is why when you then make those swings with driver, you really get yourself into a pickle. So when we're now golf club in hand, 
with the club head off the floor, I can feel the pressure in the handle. I can start to move the handle in. I can start to elevate the handle, which then starts to change the shaft pitch. And then there's the pressure on the handle again. So there's the handle pressure. There's the broom head starting to change its weight. And now there's the pressure down on the handle through strike, which then lines it all back up through strike. And because I'm exerting the force on the handle, the handle is going down that way underneath my chest. You can see I can control how much angle of attack I put on the golf ball every time I play because I just manage, micromanage how much force I put down on the handle to make the angle of attack change. But not only that, all of the time I'm applying force on the handle, can you see how it's lining the face back up? Lining the face back up, as opposed to doing completely the opposite, tucking the right elbow in, lifting the handle up, swinging from the inside, drop kicking the crap out of it, and making your golf utter tripe. So please, please stop swinging inside out. Please, please stop tucking your right elbow in. Please, please stop looking for more side bend. All of that stuff is symptomatic of using the levers well with a good grip. Go and get yourself a broom. Amazon, eBay, B&Q, wherever. <laughs> Hardware store locally. Support your local community. About 15 quid, and it'll be the best training aid you will have. I think you'll find that's good coaching. If you've enjoyed it, do hit the like button, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.